And our next speaker is uh, Harun Salak from uh, Elita. Uh, Mr. Salak is the CEO of Elita and he's talking about uh, new manufacturing ways for diffractive optics on AR. So, please. Okay. Thank you, you see. And uh, thank you everyone for being here. It's a pleasure to present our uh, waveguide printing technology here at this conference. We have been around for a while, but it's the first time we come to an AR uh, conference. Uh, so what I'm going to present today is a new way and uh, we think a better way to print uh, way, uh, gratings on waveguides. And uh, Ulita is a, a company in Switzerland um, specializing in photonics lithography. Okay, and uh, I think, uh, as many of you know, uh, one of the biggest challenges in the AR space is the fabrication of uh, the optics, the waveguide optics, uh, uh, because it's uh, uh, as a for a lithography technology, it's uh, challenging in the sense that the resolution is quite high. The requirements, precision is uh, precision requirement is also quite high. Quality requirements are high, and the uh, throughput requirements are also very high because waveguides uh, are very large devices, unlike some chips, laser chips, and other chips. Okay, uh, and there are solutions, uh, common solutions that people consider for uh, fabrication, uh, high volume fabrication, but. Uh, uh, not everyone is uh, very satisfied with the uh, current solutions because of uh, quality issues, yield issues, uh, uh, cost and throughput issues. Okay, I will uh, talk more in detail about these things. Uh, so we bring a photolithography solution uh, to this problem. And photolithography, as I think I'm sure all of you know, is the backbone of uh, semiconductor industry and uh, it has uh, many decades of uh, development behind it and he has a huge and very mature infrastructure materials like photoresist photomask technology uh, processes all developed around photolithography technology so uh, that's what we want to bring also into the world of waveguide fabrication uh, we have been working with uh, many uh, companies big and small and uh, doing uh, demonstrations and also some production is also going on. Uh, typically, we have NDAs with our customers, so we cannot show many waveguide uh, examples, but this is an example of a, a waveguide structure printed on a silicon wafer. Our customer allowed us to share uh, it here. It's printed on a 100 millimeter silicon wafer. You can see a typical input coupling uh, the grating and the expansion gratings printed on a silicon wafer. In this case, they are already etched in silicon actually as a demo. Okay, I think I don't have to tell you too much about this, uh, the way the diffractive waveguide works. Uh, so there's a light engine, a grating, basically couples the light uh, into the waveguide by diffracting it and through total internal reflection, it then uh, ends up on an outcoupling grating which then diffracts the light out uh, to the eye of the observer. The glass uh, is, uh, big, uh, needs to be, uh, have high refractive index uh, for a large field of view. And uh, the in-coupling, out-coupling gratings uh, can be either 1D or 2D gratings. And uh, they can be either of binary type or slanted uh, type uh, or even placed uh, gratings are used. Okay, there are many design alternatives. We have seen many and printed many. Uh, the common features that the, the, there's an in-coupling grating, uh, people expansion grating, and an out-coupling grating. Then here I show you two examples of those. So what are the manufacturing challenges? Uh, first one is performance. The precision requirements are very high in terms of pitch accuracy. Uh, uniformity of the pattern, so we, we are not, uh, uh, the defect tolerance uh, is also important, 
and also the reproducibility of the printing is very important because you, you need to do high volume uh, manufacturing. And this is actually where uh, common techniques also suffer a lot. Okay. And the other part is it has to do more with the economy. Uh, and it has to do with throughput, yield, and cost. And you have to consider that if uh, the projections are realized, billions of devices need to be printed. And these devices are not small. They are large, uh, like glass size uh, devices, which is a big challenge for photolithography. And it's also a big opportunity for uh, people like us who want to print uh, waveguides. Okay. And I want to talk a, a little bit about specific print, uh, printing requirements. So here I show an example of a grating where the pitch and the line width is shown. The pitch uh, is typically in the range of 150 to 600 nanometers that we see in different designs. Uh, pitch accuracy requirement is typically less than one angstrom, so that's less than 0 0.1 nanometers. And uh, the line width is uh, measured as a percentage of the pitch it typically changes to, uh, between 20 to 80 percent, and that's necessary to control the diffraction efficiency. Uh, and it's often also necessary to vary the line width, that's the diffraction ac ac uh, efficiency across the grating. Okay, and uh, as I also said, uh, there are many different uh, gratings, uh, uh, several different gratings on a layout, and they need to be aligned to each other, and the, the alignment accuracy is uh, typically better than, needs to be better than one milli degree. Okay. Now I want to talk about uh, the alternatives, high volume manufacturing alternatives, not just making one sample or so. So I will compare three techniques here. This is a little busy slide, please uh, bear with me. So first of all is uh, our technique, which we call Fable, comes from Photonics Enabler. It's a proximity technique. It's a non-contact technique. I will tell you more about it. Okay, I will explain how it works. But for now, I just want to compare different techniques. Okay, the other one is the projection lithography, which the semiconductor industry has been using. So where uh, a mask is basically, image of a mask is projected onto your substrate, onto your mask, typically with a ma demagnification of, by a factor of four or five. Okay, and nano-imprint lithography is the, uh, Newer to, uh, is newer than projection. It's a mechanical uh, contact-based uh, printing technique. Okay. First of all, let's talk about resolution. So as an optical uh, lithography technique, our resolution is uh, similar to projection lithography. Uh, using uh, excimer laser, ARF laser with 193 nanometer radiation, that's deep UV light. We get, uh, our resolution in terms of half pitch is on the order of 50 nanometers, which is same as projection lithography. And here I don't consider immersion lithography. This is just dry uh, deep UV lithography. In the case of nano imprint, it really depends on the template, and the templates are usually written by e beam. So if your nano imprint process is good enough, and that's an if, then you basically have the resolution of the template. Okay. Uh, throughput uh, in uh, optical techniques like ours or um, uh, projection photolithography is typically on the order of 100 wafers per hour or more. And uh, for nano imprint, we are not really sure. We hear different things and typically in the order of some tens of um, uh, wafers per hour. Uh, and yield and quality, as I said, uh, uh, photolithography is a proven technique in terms of uh, quality, no residuals, no uh, it's quite smooth and uh, nice structures, and that's also thanks to the photomask technology and photoresist technology. Whereas uh, we hear often, especially from customers, uh, that uh, there are issues uh, in the process that affect the yield and quality, such as demolding and the, some residual films uh, uh, in the process, left after the process. We have uh, uh, one uh, disadvantage, uh, which you can call uh, in terms of pattern types that we can print. Our technique is specifically for printing periodic structures, like grating, photonic crystals, and things like that. Whereas uh, projection lithography and nano imprint lithography are uh, also good for arbitrary printing arbitrary patterns. 
But uh, for, that's why we are here for the applications where periodic structures are required. Our technique is uh, uh, similar to the, has uh, basically uh, sim similar performance to other te techniques. And uh, one big advantage we have is we have a very high tolerance to uh, um, uh, non-flatness. We can even print on the curved substrates because we have a huge depth of focus, whereas this is not possible with uh, either projection or uh, non-imprint technologies. Mask lifetime in uh, basically uh, photon-based lithographies is uh, very high, practically unlimited, whereas for non-imprint, basically the mask is a consumable because you need a soft stamp. Okay. In terms of cost, we are maybe an order of magnitude uh, lower than projection lithography. Uh, Nano-imprint lithography is uh, somewhere in between, we think. Okay, now I want to go on to explain how our uh, technology works. And this is based on an uh, effect called Talbot effect, which was discovered uh, about 200 years ago. It is sometimes also called self-imaging of gratings. So if you have a grating like that, I show here in cross-section, you eliminate it with a parallel beam of light, and then you get an intensity distribution like this. Okay, And uh, here you can notice that uh, the, if this is the intensity distribution at the exit of the uh, grating, then this is repeated at these uh, planes again and again, and this periodically continues. It's also called self-imaging uh, for obvious reasons. And uh, this is a very attractive technique for uh, 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 effect for lithography because you can essentially place your substrate here uh, with photoresist and uh, record this pattern. There is no need to have a lens between your uh, projection between your mask and the wafer. But the problem is the depth of focus. As in, as in similar to projection lithography, the depth of focus is very limited. And when you'd want to do this over large areas, you have to put your uh, wafer at an absolute distance to the mask, and you have to make sure that it's absolutely parallel within about, uh, let's say, for in practical cases, about 50 nanometers, which is really a very difficult job to do. Therefore, uh, Talbot effect itself is not really practical, and uh, despite many attempts, it has not been um, used in any application that I know. Okay, so our uh, Technique is based on Talbot effect, but we are not doing this. Instead of trying to find a focus, what we do is we take an average of the intensity distribution within one period of the Talbot uh, field here, the intensity distribution. And when you do that, then uh, the result is a uniform pattern irrespective of your distance of your substrate from the mask. Basically, you can your, put your wafer at any distance from the mask and move it by one Talbot period during the exposure, and you will always get the same result. And that's independent of the uh, distance, starting distance. I have a short movie illustrating that. So these are masks. We illuminate it with uh, light. We form the Talbot pattern. We have our photoresist coated substrate here. Now we are going to move it over one Talbot period. And now the photoresist is exposed by this set of two sets of peaks, uh, and uh, we develop it. And the result is that we print lines here, and for every line on the mask, we print two lines on the, on the wafer. As you can also see here, there is no demagnification in terms of grating area. So if you have a one centimeter grating on your mask, you print a one centimeter grating on your wafer, but the resolution is twice. So you, if this has like 600 nanometer pitch, uh, your printed pattern will have 300 nanometer pitch. That's a great advantage for mask fabrication because uh, maybe some of you know photo mask costs really explode as a function of resolution. Okay. Okay, so what can we do with this technique? We can print all kinds of periodic structures, not only lines. The, here I will show you some examples. As I told you, in the case of lines, you divide the period by two. You can also print 2D patterns here in a single shot. Uh, for example, if you use a square array of holes on your mask, you would print again a square array. But uh, for every hole in the 
mask, you will have print two holes on the wafer. And this is an example pattern uh, printed in this way. Uh, and uh, you can also have a hexagonal lattice and you will print a hexagonal lattice with no resolution gain in this case. Basically, we can do also other things like rectangular lattices, rhombic lattices, and things like that. As long as it's periodic, we can also do things like quasi-periodic structures. And uh, we have been doing this for more than 10 years. Uh, Yulta has extensive uh, IP over this and similar uh, technologies. And we have literally, we and our customers printed uh, tens of thousands of wafers and this is a very robust technology. Okay, so last, uh, recently, we um, introduced our Fable X model. So our business is basically making uh, photolithography equipment. We provide machines to print gratings. Okay, we introduced our Fable X model specifically for waveguide uh, printing. And uh, since it has this deep UV uh, light source, 193 nanometer ARF light source, the specified resolution is uh, 65 nanometer in terms of half pitch. The machine can take four inch, six inch, or eight inch wafers. Uh, it can be configured for thin or thick substrates. If you have a thick glass, uh, you can also print on that. It has overlay alignment ca uh, capability, either on the front side or on the back side. Some of our customers are printing grating uh, on glass on both sides, and this is also possible. Uh, to, uh, to, it's possible to align backside to the front side. Uh, and the operation is automatic, that means cassette to cassette. Uh, and our throughput is uh, in the range of 30 to 40 wafers per hour. 40 wafers per hour we achieve when there is no overlay uh, requirement, uh, no, no overlay alignment. And if it is a first uh, printed layer, if it is a overlay required, it's uh, about 30 wafers per hour. And we have a roadmap to increase these numbers to uh, over 100 wafers per hour, and in principle, there is no uh, roadblock because uh, the lasers basically have enough power. We, we just need to make the stages a little bit uh, faster, optimize our software, and use a larger laser. Okay, so this machine is uh, in the market and uh, has been installed on uh, at multiple sites now. This is actually one way for uh, one of our big customers allowed us to share here. It's a six inch wafer. It uh, has a test uh, structure. Basically, this is a test wafer that is used for daily monitoring of the tool. It, uh, you can see it's full of uh, gratings. Some of them are uh, colorful, but others are also gratings, which don't ha happen to shine with these illumination conditions. Okay. Again, uh, we do also have in-house uh, Fable X tool uh, in our demo lab, and this we use for demonstrations. Typically, uh, the way we work is we get a layout from our uh, waveguide manufacturer customer, and uh, we design the corresponding photo mask, have it also manufactured, and then uh, we print uh, these on glass wafers, uh, typically uh, for uh, demonstration uh, purposes. And if uh, we also do low volume production for supporting development, for example, if uh, somebody orders a tool and uh, they want to start development right away for a few months unt until they get their own tool, we, we also support uh, their development by doing some low volume uh, production on our uh, demonstration lab. Okay. Uh, this is uh, 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 these are gratings printed on a glass wafer. You can see this uh, wafer outside on our uh, boot. Okay, uh, as I think some of you, I'm sure, know, uh, duty cycle is uh, important uh, in terms of controlling diffraction efficiency of uh, uh, gratings. And uh, we get designs that look like this, a 2D variation of duty cycle across a grating area. And uh, it is possible with our technology to print uh, such uh, basically arbitrary uh, maps of 1D or 2D variations of uh, duty cycle. So here I show you uh, some duty cycle variation printed on one wafer starting from about 25%. So this is, these are gratings with uh, 300 nanometer pitch. And these uh, are SEM images of 
pattern in photoresist. It's not etched uh, yet. And it very, the, uh, basically the line width varies continuously from about 25% to 80% with no loss of uh, quality. Okay, as I said, the, the pattern needs to be periodic for us to use this, uh, what we call displacement Talbot lithography. But it, this all is only required in a local sense. Globally or over large distances, the pattern can vary. For example, uh, you can have a curved grating, a chirped grating, some phase variations in your grating, and this is all, uh, you can all uh, print that. What we cannot have is abrupt variations. As long as the variation is uh, gradual, happening over, let's say, hundreds of microns, this uh, can be printed. Here I show you an example of a curved uh, grating. Uh, here the inner diameter is about, I think, seven millimeters. And these are uh, lines printed. Basically, these are circular uh, concentric lines uh, printed on a, on a substrate. This is uh, also, we, our applications are actually diverse, not only AR. We have, for example, telecom gratings, spectroscopy gratings. So there are people who print gratings with uh, uh, in, uh, combining both uh, pitch variations, like chirp gratings, plus uh, curvature uh, in the uh, telecom field, for example, or spectroscopy. So this is an established thing for us. We can also, for example, for DFP gratings, it's another area uh, for our application for our technology, printing gratings on DFP lasers. There also we print uh, phase variations, also for AR gratings, if you have some kind of phase variation that's required on your uh, wafer, this can also be printed with our technology, as long as it's gradual and not abrupt. Okay, so we cannot change the phase or the uh, pitch from one line to the next, but we can do it over a distance, which is for many optical applications what is uh, needed and uh, also even preferred. Okay. I told you also that uh, we have a huge depth of focus. That means we can also print on curved uh, substrates. Uh, I, uh, this is, um, we, my colleagues took these uh, representations uh, from an article, I think. This uh, shows a combination of a, a flat waveguide with some curved optics uh, so that people who use glasses can uh, also uh, use AR. It's uh, like an integrated device. If one day people are able to design uh, gratings uh, that work on curved surfaces, uh, that we will also be able to uh, uh, print with our technique with precise uh, phase and pitch control. So this is, I think, more for the future. Uh, this is an example of a 2D pattern that's printed with our technology. It's a rhombic lattice. Uh, I think it also has a, a period of 250 nanometer, if I'm not mistaken. Um, okay, so basically to recap what I have just told you, we introduce a high volume manufacturing technique for uh, waveguide fabrication. Uh, it is non-contact, it is reproducible and easy uh, proven process. It's already operational at multiple sites for the purpose of uh, AR uh, waveguide fabrication. And uh, demo and low volume runs are available at Yulita uh, Demo Lab. And uh, if you are interested, uh, please uh, visit our booth, number uh, 631. We are here uh, and happy to talk to you about our technology. Thank you. Thank you, Harun. Any questions from the audience? Thanks for the presentation. Uh, curious, are there any products that have been announced or are on the market uh, that are using uh, waveguides printed with this technique, either uh, with your tools specifically or anyone doing something similar? OK. Uh, first of all, uh, there is no one else doing a similar thing because this is a really patented technology of uh, Yulita. Uh, there are uh, no products that we know of in the AR field uh, using our technology, but there is uh, intense development effort in uh, some fabs based on our uh, tools. Uh, 
Uh, and there will be some demonstrations also in the coming year, uh, public demonstrations of waveguides. We have seen examples running, but nothing that we can share. You did mention something about uh, control of the efficiency of gratings. Yes. Can you do gradient efficiency across the, um, the gratings? Yes, exactly. I mean, I, I think I showed you, like, um, I'm not sure if I can go back. It's uh, quite far. So we can get, a, like, a 2D map of uh, duty cycle variation, a gradient, and uh, print that exactly. Yes. So you showed a couple of examples of waveguides. I think there was a DigiLens one and a wave optics one. Yeah. Now, now yeah. typically, as you know, these are vertically integrated. So in your case, if I understood correctly, you don't have the design tools, the front end side, you offer manufacturing service. Yes, basically waveguide manufacturers, consumer electronic uh, companies, these are our customers. But basically, we are, we are you not, don't we... have vertical operations. So no. not a wave optics, not a DigiLens. No, we are not like that. No, we, we make the machine, we enable lithography, and we work this, with these companies. Mm, more questions? I have one. Uh, regarding the, you mentioned the, the cost could be one tenth of the optical lithography techniques, although kind of scanning yeah. techniques. So it, it, does that also apply on the manufacturing the mask for the, your techniques? Is that also going to have lower cost or? Well, uh, ask, actually mask cost is related to several things. One is it's related to throughput. Okay. I mean, if your machine has half the throughput, you need to basically, a, a manufacturer needs two machines instead of one, and when they need two machines, they also need two photo masks, okay? So throughput helps a lot uh, in terms of the need for uh, mask fabrication. Uh, the mask infrastructure basically is in place. It's excellent. I mean, you can imagine the kinds of masks that uh, are written to make integrated circuits with single digit uh, overlay alignment accuracy uh, for semiconductor circuits. Same machines are used to make the photo masks for our technology. So this is really unbelievably good. And we are uh, really taking advantage of this uh, infrastructure of uh, the, this technology. The costs uh, are not very low, but uh, I think these are, this can be basically justified and absorbed. And compared to non-imprint lithography, it is also uh, lower because our resolution requirement is uh, only half of the non-imprint. Okay. Can you use this technology to make, to produce the masks themselves? Okay, that's also a very good uh, question. And we do it every day, actually. <laughs> Because uh, imagine we, we want to make like a 250 nanometer pitch mask, okay? If you want to buy this, this is very expensive. Whereas we can buy like a one micron pitch mask, it's laser written, it's cheap, it's high quality. And then we can print once, make it 500, again, once, 250. Yeah, this is daily for us, yes. Okay, we have time for one more question. Um, so you're using Axamer lasers, so you probably have limited um, coherence length in those systems. Do you have to do a lot of beam conditioning to give you the coherence length you need for this? Actually, we don't like coherence. <laughs> so we, we use rather cheaper uh, Axamer lasers. We don't need line narrowing and things like that. Okay, thank you. Let's uh, thank the speaker again.